Welcome everyone. Let me know if you can see the slide and the arrow. Plan of action for tonight is <coughs> I'm going to talk with the PowerPoint and then I'm, when I'm done at the end, I'm going to bring up my charts and then talk about where the market is at this week. Okay? If you have questions as we're going along, you can write it in the room. Okay? <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you. Wonderful. Okay, welcome everyone. Today I'm going to talk about trading on the side of institutional money. And the thing is, what I do specifically is look for the institutional money in a chart. I'm trying to predict what stocks are getting bought or sold off by institutions, okay? That's essentially what I do. Then if I see that buying is going to come in, again, with institutional money, I will go long. And consequently, if I see selling is going to come in or shorting in institutional money, then I will short, okay? <laughs> so for those of you that don't know what I do, I only do gaps, but I do them in two different ways. I do gaps using options, particularly with stocks that are expensive, or even the market, which is expensive right now. And I also do day trades. Now, if you're day trading, you need margin, okay? So they are equity trades where we're in and out quickly. But everything I do is based on my gap strategy, okay, which we're going to talk about here tonight. If you have any questions, you can email me at melissa at thestockswish.com, and you can call me at 929-3200-GAP. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. I appear on national television, and I try to put all of my TV appearances on YouTube as well. So that's a good place to go subscribe. So we're, we're getting into the summer, actually. It's Memorial Day in, in a few days, less than a week. So it's officially summer 2021, hard to believe. It just feels like it was just Christmas, to be honest with you. And now we're into the summer months. It's 80 some degrees here in New York. It's gorgeous right now, beautiful. Um, and a lot of people think that you can't make money in the summer, that the market is slow in the summer, but that's simply not true. So you can make money in the summer trading. You absolutely can, but you have to look for specific stocks to train that move and have momentum. But I find that that's the truth no matter any time of the year. Okay, you really have to have stocks that move, have volume and momentum, but you can make money trading in the summer. I prefer to be in and out of my trades very quickly in the first few minutes of the day, first half an hour of the day, first hour of the day, but quickly, okay? So it really doesn't matter what the market does after that. And again, that makes for a nice lifestyle when you're trading, if you're doing it full time, to be able to, done, to be done very quickly in the morning and then have the rest of your day to yourself when the weather is nice. Okay, I live in the Northeast, I'm in New York, and <laughs> summer's the time to get out. When it's cold in New York, you don't wanna go out as much. So there's things to do. And you wanna be outside, outdoor dining, all kinds of things. So it's a nice lifestyle to train and be done very quickly in the morning. So I'm looking for the fast trade in and out in and out very quick i don't mess around all right today we did jwn i don't have that trade in here it was nordstrom it was a short um i can show you that at the end we were in and out literally <laughs> i think it was less than less than 20 minutes or something okay so the idea is to just get the quick move if you've been training for a while and you know you really uh consider yourself an experienced trader you don't know what I know in reference to gaps because I specifically created my own system, okay? So everybody that comes to me really is a newbie in what I do. That's okay. I do my best to try to break it down, even if you've been trading for you know longer than I'm alive. You don't know what I know about gaps. One of the reasons that I think that I'm successful is because I'm, I'm a very detail-oriented person. Uh, hyper detailed actually and I took the time to create 26 points to determine or predict the stocks direction when it's gapping now that may seem like a lot but quite frankly if I could come up with 126 points I would so that I'd never take a loss in a trade obviously I do lose in some trades some trades I take lose but more trades I take win than lose because I'm looking at 26 things in a chart and that's a lot 
That's a heck of a lot, okay? And so it's the idea when you are taking risk in the market when you're trading, you're looking for a strategy to do on a daily basis that has consistent wins and high odds. Because trading or risky money in the market is about odds. You have to increase your odds, meaning you have, again, a higher odd, odds of making money, okay? So that is why I try to break it down and look at as many possible things as I can in a chart. All right, and we'll talk about that more here today. And any questions for the people that are uh, bopping in late? If you came in late, just plop them in the room. So getting to what I was saying, what is institutional money, what does it even mean? It's a big footprint that comes into the stock and, and it comes in in a big, big way with volume, very often volatility, and then has a big move. So all the stocks that I trade, any, everything that we, we do, are companies that you would know that you heard of, okay? They're not low float stocks or penny stocks or anything like that. You wanna be a blip when you take a position in something, even if you take 5,000 shares, okay? You don't wanna move the stock. That would not be good, whether you're getting in or getting out. But volatility is something that's good and it creates opportunity as an active trader. And that's what you really, really want, again, to play it, gotta get in the right direction, have to get in the right direction no matter what, but it's a move, it's momentum. I'm not getting in stocks and taking something for five cents, 10 cents. I'm trying to get a dollar. Depending on the price of the stock could be more than a dollar, okay? Even 80 cents is good, but I'm not getting in and out with a couple pennies, okay? That would be like scalping, that's not what I do. So institutional money controls the market. And when you have volatility, you say, well, how, why do you have the volatility? Well, again, you have retail traders in the market and you have institutional money in the market and they're not always on the right side. In fact, very often retail traders are against institutional money. More, most retail traders lose, by the way. They can't move stocks. Now I know, you know, there's a, been going on, this has been going on for months where everyone is talking about the Reddit chat groups. What happened with GME was an anomaly. Okay, that is not something that's gonna consistently happen in the market or have any longevity. In fact, there are people that are along that right now that are upside down and are never gonna get the stock back to their initial price point. So when you understand how the market works, when you understand that institutional money, which is big banks, big professional traders, hedge funds, when you understand that they rule the market, control the market, big, big money, to the tune of billions and billions and billions of dollars, okay, not a Reddit chat group, when you understand that, then you can really get behind it if you know how to read it and very easily make a lot of money trading in a few minutes or a few seconds because you're just getting a slight blip of a move of a stock that happens when an institution moves something. Again, whether it's up or whether it's down. Uh, we're, we'll talk about one long and one short in here today. But volatility is good and you have it because you have people doing different things uh, it, volatility is when something happens and it's unexpected. You think something's going to go up and it goes down. You think something's going to go down and it goes up. Okay. But again, if you're playing in the right direction, that's good. That's good. Okay. So again, who makes volatility and why? Big money. Big money. So all you have to do is learn how to play with that. And again, if you can, it's gonna be very easy for you to profit because you aren't moving the stock. The institution is moving the stock. You've gotta get in it and you've gotta get out of it after the money move happens, okay? Like I'll show you here in a couple examples that we did from a prior trains and then I'll show you the JWN today, but it's the point that you're not gonna move it, okay? So, what I do is I look for institutional money. How am I looking at it? I'm not predicting the gap itself. I'm seeing the gap and then I rate the gap. You get gaps on a regular basis. That's the nice thing about gaps too. We get some days 50 gaps. I try to just do one a day. Sometimes we do more than one, okay? But the nice thing about it is I see the gap in the daily chart, but I'm honing it down in the one minute chart to take the entry. Now when I do options, again, I'm looking at the daily chart and looking at the gap to rate the option to determine if I'm doing the option as a call or a put. But the same system, the golden gap system is what I use, which is applicable to doing it as an option or a day trade. 
But again, when you're day trading, I'm holding it down on a one minute because I wanna take the entry and a miniature move, put the stop in because I have a fixed risk, okay? I have a limit order stop and I wanna get in and out very, very quickly because when you're doing a day trade, you have to exit the trade before four. You get in sometime between 9.30 and four. And again, options, you can't get in before the open anyways. Now, 10 minutes before the open and 10 minutes after the open, you can do the QQQs and SPY options. That's, that's not recommended, but just you could do the market options 10 minutes before and 10 minutes after. But I suggest to people to wait until after the open, okay? And any questions here, let me know. <clears throat> so a big flow of money, getting back to institutional money, it's in charge of the market and stocks at all times, even now. We're going to talk about the market at the end, but the market refuses to fall. It is simply not falling. No matter what, it won't go down. Today, even, we didn't go down. Yesterday, we really didn't hardly go down. The SPY is almost at the highs again, almost making a brand new all-time high on a holiday week. Okay, we're going into a long weekend here. Markets close Monday. So the money is in the market, and it continues to buy it. And institutional money isn't selling right now. How do I know? Or the market would have fallen, specifically in the last 48 hours, okay? So you have to know who's in charge. A big flow of money going in a certain direction is what moves the market stocks and creates momentum and sets the trend in charts. When you're looking for institutional money, you are really reading the side of the power in a stock. You want to be in the side of the power in order for you to make money trading, okay? institutional money is in charge in the market and stocks at all times it just is even if you think it isn't it is and that's what makes trading tricky for some people okay they get it wrong sometimes they think something's going a certain way or they think a trend is a certain way and it turns out to be the opposite and they lose okay so becoming a successful trader and investor requires becoming a specialist and that's really the key if you can be, get good at one thing, for me it's gaps, and particularly reading the daily chart in the gap, you can succeed, okay? A lot of people are all over the place doing multiple things or many things, following fundamentals, doing different strategies, uh, following different indicators, and they're all over the place and they never really focus on one thing or get good at one thing. I'm good at one thing, and I continue to get better at that year over year. I don't do anything else, and I never will because I don't need to. So year over year, I increase my size when I'm in trades, okay, to make more money, not doing different things. People always ask me if I do cryptocurrency or Forex or any of that stuff. No, no, I don't. Okay, I have no interest in that. What I do is just trade the U.S. market and it's focused on gaps. So I'm a specialist in defining where the institutions are buying or selling a stock. Learning advanced technical analysis is required because this is how I make the picks. What does this mean? It means reading price action and charts, and specifically in the gap. Comprehending how to read, define, and trade with this power, again, which is a big money, like I was saying, will have a huge positive impact in your profitability as a trader. And it'll also allow you to uh, make money very quickly, okay? Because when institutional money comes in, it often comes in fast. And ideally, you don't, you don't wanna be in trades long. Ideally, I'd be out of every trade in five minutes, okay? And even options, ideally I'd be out of every options trade within a day or two, okay? That's not always the case, but ideally. The longer you're in a trade, more things can affect that trade. Whether it's a sector, whether it's news, something like COVID, okay, which we saw over a year ago. All kinds of things that you never know about. So elevate yourself, your trading, your profits to a higher level of consistency and success by learning how to read the footprints of institutions trading in the market, okay? Because if you can learn how to read those big position players before, okay, before the momentum comes in, before the momentum occurs, I'm predicting that it's going to occur. Again, whether up or down. But if you get in before that, you take the position in the right direction, and then you get out after the move happens for profit. You, and then you understand when you're in it, and you feel it, and how big things can move. And it's very important to trade with this type of this type of big money because it really has the ability to pay you, specifically if you're an individual person and you don't have hundreds of thousands of millions of dollars, how are you going to make any money at all in the market without a, 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 a really ridiculous amount of risk? You know, you have people taking bizarre amounts of size in these low float stocks 
that have very low volume and they actually move the stock when they take them in these penny stocks it's just way too much risk okay and again not enough volume so the only way one individual person can make thousands of dollars trading is if you're in stocks that have big moves with institutional money okay so this is what makes it possible for someone like you and me to actually make money in the market consistently pulling it in and out and be successful so for me it's just one strategy to trade one focus one strategy and again it's gaps now i termed and coined my system the golden gap because it is like finding gold of the market just like we did today i saw jwn and actually i saw it last night i think was when it reported yeah it was last night i saw it i knew it was good and i was going to do it today because it is like finding gold because it's only all i need i just need one of those every single day and then i'm making money so let's talk about what is a gap more specifically. What is a gap? A stock gap from the opening price today is a different than the closing price of yesterday's trading. A gap is a break in price action from one day to the next. Simple. Almost everything gaps on every single get day. So this isn't any about a percentage. There's no percentages that I use to make my determination or my points. If specifically, if something closed at 3202 and opened tomorrow at 3203, it would be gapping up. It would be gapping up a penny but it would be gapping up. If it closed at 3202 and opened at 32 even, it would be gapping down. It would be gapping down two pennies, okay? So that would be a gap down, and that was an example of a gap up. Now, we did this one yesterday. This was DY. This is a daily chart. Here's the gap. Stock closed here the night before. Again, this is, uh, well, this was yesterday. This was the day before yesterday. What's today, Wednesday? So this was Tuesday, this was Monday. So Monday, this is Dyson, this closed here, okay, snug as a bug, roughly a little bit above 52, um, or no, 82, I'm sorry. Then gap down here the following day, this was Tuesday, around 76, okay? And we shorted this. You see the red bar, this fell. Low of the day was 70 something, it was a really big move down. So entry was 73.30, and this was a good, a good risk, okay? It was a 20 cent risk with a 20 cent stop. So risk was $2,500, added at 73, total shares was 5,000, average price 73.15, exit was 70.50, okay? So this was a really, 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 uh, big move again we were talking about momentum and on top of the big move you had size okay so big move in size now this was an advanced risk okay which is fine when you're taking something with an advanced risk uh that means you have the account size to do it on margin you could have taken a thousand shares okay you could have taken 500 shares um, I there was a gap here. I did not do this. Bruce is mentioning this gap. I didn't do this or rate this one here at all. So I didn't pay attention to this one. This is the one that we did. But I want to show you here how you see the move. Okay, average price was seventy three fifteen. Exit was seventy fifty. 14,000 profit on the day with this kinds of size. That's a beautiful move. Why didn't I do that one? I don't know what I did that day. I can look up and tell you what I did on the 19th. I did something else. I did something else. At the end, I can look it up. I usually only do one thing a day. Now, I might do more than one thing a day. When or why? Say I get up in the morning. Say I take a trade in something. Say I take a stop. Or say it doesn't work and I lose and I stop out in something. Then I will look for a second gap or something else that I rated if I rated several things to try to have a positive day. But I didn't do that and I don't know why and I don't remember what I did that day on the 19th. But I can look back and let you know. But it's not like I'm trading all day. That's my point from earlier. If I take one trade and I'm done, that's it. Okay, like we did the JWN today, that's it. Were there other things that work today? Sure. Do I know what they all are? No, I don't care. I like JWN, I rated it, I traded it, it worked, I was done, I was out. Boom. You know? 
So that, that was that. So again, getting back to my point of what I was saying, um, you, you, when you, if your goal, like say this is, you want to do this and you want to make money and say you want to do this for, uh, you know, your job. Okay. You're not going to do anything else but this. This isn't gambling where you keep going after it and throwing your chips back in and playing and playing and gambling all night at Atlantic City, okay? My job is to get up and find the best gap and make money and be done. Once the money's made, I'm done. So I don't keep throwing money back into the market. I have limited time. My job was complete for that day. That's the end of my job, I go home. And that's how I look at it. And that is, I think, another problem that traders struggle with since, since we brought this up, is that they do keep trading and trading and trading. You know, how many times, and I think I have this slide in here, the bullet, how many times can you hit a bullseye? Let me see if I have it in here, I think I do. Let me just see if I have this one slide in here. No, I don't, shoot. Um, I have a slide. I did a video on it. I did a video on it. It's on my YouTube. Uh, you're not going to hit a bullseye. The, what the, the odds are lowered for you to hit a bullseye all day long from 9.30 to 4. Bullseye, 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 bullseye. Do you understand what I'm saying? I always say I can be perfect for half an hour a day. I, don't, I, I can't be perfect for six and a half hours a day from 9.30 to 4. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm trying to hit a bullseye. Boom. D-Y. Bullseye. Done. Boom. B-Y-N-D. Make it. Done. J-W-N. In. Out. Done. Boom. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to hit a bullseye every time I take a trade. It's, you're not going to hit a bullseye 50 times in a row from 9.30 to 4. I, does, is, am I making my point here? Okay, so let's talk about this other one here. This was a long, since we're talking about gaps. This was a long, we entered at 114.50. This was just on Monday. We went long, BYND. It was a good gap, it gapped up. Stock closed here, gapped up. We went long in the one minute chart. 1,400 shares was a risk of 26.60. Ends at 116.35, although I will tell you this ran up over 120. So you could have held this, but I got it in out quickly in the morning. That's what I like to do. Again, summer trading, fast. $2,590 was a profit. This, this, I took this, I clipped this chart early on the Monday, but this ran up to over 120 on that day. So you could have made almost $6 in it. I did not hold it up to there. Again, my goal is not to get out of something at the high of the day in a long or the low of the day in a short, but I will tell you we did have a low of the day exit today in JWN. It was a good exit. But my job every day is to make money. How much am I trying to make? One to one. So if I'm risking 2,500, I'm trying to make 2,500. If you're risking 1,000, you're trying to make 1,000. And I'm also looking for targets, and that's something that I teach in the class too. But it's one to one of the amount that I'm looking to make in the day trades. Now if I'm doing an option, I'm trying to make one to one too, but sometimes I'll be happy with 50%. So it's return on investment in an option and risk to reward in a day train. My approach makes sense, something you've been needing to improve in your trading. As far as continually over trading, going after things, or what are you saying? I had a big problem with that because when I first, first started trading, obviously I had friends that were traders, they were trading all day. And I realized trading rooms were, were open all day and that's one of the reasons I don't have the room open all day and all they did was trade all day and it was crazy. You couldn't follow the instructor because they traded all day, they did too many trades and it was just nuts. And all you did was give money back in the afternoon, it was stupid. So I learned very uh, early on to close the room early, stop trading early and even if that means you have to shut it down and walk away. You know, I mean it's whatever you need to do to, to enforce the discipline is exactly what you need to do because you know there's a lot of trading rooms that are open all day mine is not one of them I mean the room today I think we closed by 10 o'clock some days we I've closed the room at 9 45 we're done you know so anyways golden gas which BYND was DY was 
they have huge opportunity because they spot power money, okay? And again, how is a stock like DY fall off a planet like that? Or even BYND, how did it go from 114 and change all the way up to 120? I didn't hold it till there, but how did it go and have a big move like that? And again, neither one of those stocks were cheap because institutions bought and sold them, okay? Now, how do you find gaps? You can find gaps anywhere pretty much everywhere. You can buy a scanner if you want to. You can pay for a scanner if you want to. It's not hard to find gaps. What is hard is to qualify gaps, which you would only learn if you took my course. And then even if you rate them and take the class, I might rate 20 things and only find one I like. Do you know what I'm saying? So there are less things that are good to do on any given day than you think. So there are tons and tons and tons and tons of tons of gaps. There's no shortage of gaps in any given day. Like I said, it's rare that something would close at the same price and open at the same price and the market gaps almost every single day. What is rare is to find a good one. But again, you only need one. And if I have more than one, I may make a small list, but I usually try to stick with one, okay? Or I might do one, <coughs> excuse me, as a day trade, and then I might do one as an option, okay? Might do that. Anyway, so my whole process is I get up in the morning, early, way before the market opens. I have everything figured out before then. I go through a checklist, I rate the gap, I qualify it, the checklist tells you what to look for in the price of the stock. So I know everything I like before 9.30. That also helps me be more focused on the open to take the trade and more relaxed. And if I don't get the setup, I don't do the trade. Then I don't do anything that day. Again, you, I'm, I'm so prepared in the pre-market Figuring everything out, targets, support, the entries, everything I'm looking at, the rating, that it makes it so much less stressful on the live day when I'm trading, okay? It's a lot less stress because I have everything figured out. If I get it, I see the trade. If I don't, I don't do the trade. So getting back to institutional money or power money, there's only one thing and one thing only that can move the direction of a stock. It's money. Not a little bit of money, but a lot of money or what I call power money. Power money is in charge. Power money is in charge of the stock's direction. Trends are set and moved by the power money people, of which there is a lot of in the market. So that's the other thing, as I was saying earlier. You may think that institutions aren't in charge of a stock, but they are. Even if you think they're not there, they are. Or they could come in swift and quick and blow you through your position. So that's why you have to read it right, and you have to respect, respect this institutional money. Like right now, you can't short this market. You're getting killed if you're short this market right now. Like I just said, we're, we're steps, baby steps from making a new high in the spy. You know, people that are short or have been short for the last few weeks thinking the market wasn't going to continue higher, they're down. They're down money. Okay? So gaps happen in the market on a regular basis. However, some gaps are better than others. Some gaps are nothing gaps where I won't do anything. I don't, I said, I, this doesn't rate good. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> and actually, most gaps are nothing gaps. All right? Because remember, most every day, everything's gapping. And some gaps are very powerful displays of institutional money. Those are the ones I focus on. The most important gaps in the market are gaps that signify a change in direction or a bigger move in the same direction, which is nice. Understanding which gaps are meaningful and which gaps are not meaningful in the market will help you to know what to do and when a change is occurring. That is how you know where the power of money will flow to pay you, which is obviously your goal and what you're trying to do. So again, it all comes down, the meat and potatoes for me is a 26 point checklist, which I figure out in the pre-market in the morning. Now, if you're in a different time zone, like if you're in California, you wanna do the rating at night, fine. Like I know NVIDIA reported tonight, we can look at that when we're done. You wanna rate that tonight? If you knew the rating system, you could do it. Sleep in, but I get up early. Okay, I like to do that. So the key to profits really is power money. That's how you're gonna get the big moves. Like like that JWN today, you know, like, like the DY. You've got to think of this intellectually. While we are risking money and while it is fun to trade, trading is not gambling. It's not about going after it all the time, every second. And how much can you make? The idea is to get good. So I've developed within myself doing this now for you know 13 years, I've developed a skill. So this, I'm good at what I do because I have a skill set. Like some people are good at tennis, okay? I have a skill that I can predict directional bias of a chart, of any chart at all, once I see it gapping. So you have to gain the skill and the knowledge 
And then if you do that, the money will come and the consistency will come with your trading, which is I think a big piece of where traders lack that. They're, they don't do the same thing over and over and so they never get good at anything and they then consequently lose money and don't believe they can do it and don't believe they can be successful and they get a bad attitude as well and obviously that hurts them too. And then they look at trading as gambling and risky and something they're never gonna be successful in and a losing battle. There's no battle within me each and every day. I set the risk. Your risk should be determined by the size of your account, the cash size of it, and I use stops. And that's it. There's nothing to be stressed about. If you're stressed, then you don't know what you're doing or you're probably risking too much money. But you have to look at trading like a business, okay? It's fun to make money, and that's true. But if you never get good at anything, it's really gonna be hard for you to make money. Now, while there's people that have done my class and are in the live training room with me and they're in the options letter, Yes, I know more than they do because I've been doing this for a long time, but they listen to what I say. They learn from me every day. We discuss things in the room. They ask me questions. I help them. They follow, and we review a lot of stuff on the chart, so they get better over time. I've been doing this the longest, and obviously I've created the system, and I have a natural intuitive ability to be able to read things that are going on, but then that's experience. And if you, if you don't do something over and over, you're not gonna get the experience. Like my dad, my father's a good golfer. He's been golfing for a very long time. He's won tournaments and everything. It's beautiful weather right now, he's golfing a lot. The more my dad golfs, the better he gets. When he's busy with work and he can't, you know, leave in the middle of the afternoon to go golfing, well, he doesn't do as good that, that year. So, you know, it's, it's just like, think of it like that, it's practice. You know, think of the, Olymp the Olympics as a summer, it's hard to believe. I love watching the Olympics. It'll be interesting this year with COVID, but you know, <laughs> those athletes train for four years every day, hours and hours and hours, you know? Think about it. Anyways, getting back to what I was saying, okay? My rating system pinpoints the direction of power money by reading the price, okay? Now this is a chart from a couple of days ago, actually. Looks like I, I clipped it from last week. You say, well, who's in charge? The bulls or the bears? One of the reasons this market has been really choppy, this is a chart of the QQQs, is because we've been back and forth. So we dropped and then we rallied. Again, this was through last week, <coughs> excuse me. When you have a situation where you don't know who's in control, guess what? You don't do anything. You step back or you look for something else to do, okay? And that's okay as well. No one said you have to trade every single solitary day. You can take a day off, all right? And any questions, let me know. Anyways, it's easy to press the button to make money once you know what to look for. Then you have something called conviction. This is something that I think takes time for people too. I think my class helps people get the conviction. Once people start to trade with me in the room, they get conviction once they start to make money, even if it's $100 a day. If it's consistently Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and they make $500 a week, then people start to gain the confidence and the conviction to do it where they've lost it in the past. It's not always about making thousands and thousands of dollars in one trade. While that's fantastic and that's great when it happens, you're better off being consistent over a period of time to build your knowledge and your skill set and your confidence so that you can increase your risk later to make more money once you get good at it, all right? And so money is obviously the goal. That is the goal that's the reason you're doing it, okay? But you're never gonna get there unless you have a good strategy and there's a skill you know, involved with understanding that. Okay, we're analyzing what's happening, but you do need conviction to make money. You know, we're all risking money when we take a train and we're all working hard. And you know, I did mortgages for 17 years before I, I transitioned into trading. I thought it was gonna be easy peasy and I was gonna figure this out in three to six months. You know, looking back at that, it's hilarious when I think about it. It took me over three years to develop my system. So a lot of people have been at this, again, for longer than I'm alive. I threw, threw myself into my trading. I had no life, no life. I did mortgages and I traded back and forth till I developed my system and I had no life for three and a half years. I saw my family, that was it. And it was a tough road. 
You know, I lost a lot of money deal. I figured it out, but I kept going. And I think I have the type of personality that once I decide I want to do something, there's nothing stopping me. You know, I, I have a saying, and, and uh, <clears throat> I have to start talking about this more for people because people are in transitions in their life right now since COVID. This is well into 2021, but people have been transitioning at a crossroads in their life since 2020. People are moving, people are changing jobs, even people in the same jobs are working at different locations like homes or different cities and states. Things are changing in the world. People's kids are at home now. I mean, there's so many things. People are in like still in, we're still in this upheaval where we're trying to figure it all out, okay? The best thing that you can do for yourself is to fully invest in yourself. Like, you know, I don't know if you really want to trade. I don't know if you really want to do this, if you're excited about doing this, if you're motivated to do it, if you want to do it for a career or if you're part-time, whatever. But I say, if you want to do it, then fully, fully invest in yourself. Because if you're not happy with your life, if you're not happy with your job or your finances or whatever the circumstances of your life are, then the only person that's going to change it is you. At the time when I began trading, I was not happy with my job. And I also was starting to make less money doing mortgages because it was back 2007, 2008 when the banks weren't approving loans. It wasn't my fault. I had plenty of people that wanted to borrow money and the banks weren't approving them. So I had to make a decision. I could have wallow in self-pity and hate my job forever and make less money and change the way my lifestyle, which I didn't want to do, or I could find a new career. And it was, a, it, like I said, it was a path that took several years. But the fact is that you have to be all in in your life whatever it is and you know what that can be an, an invigorating experience you know think about it that way everyone says oh gosh it's so much work and it's so expensive and you have to do this listen you're going to be better off in the end and no one said it has to take forever you know this took me a long time to figure it out but i'm teaching you it in a two-day class are you going to know everything that i know in a class well i teach it but are you going to be as good as me in two days? No, no, you're not. But you can ask me questions. Then you start to train. Then you start to do it. Then you know what questions to ask. And then you do it over time. And that's how it happens, okay? But if you want to trade effectively, you cannot go with a crowd of day traders or the Reddit people, or, you know, just go to a chat room and take, you know, crap ideas and throw money at, 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 at your, at the market. I, that's so silly to me. There's no strategy involved there at all. And there was a lot of people actually that were burned, burned by that earlier in the year. There, in fact, there was more people that were burned than were people that ever made money in that. So it's it's funny to me that those chat rooms still exist. But but people are so desperate, so desperate for ideas. And they don't care if they work or not. It's like they don't even understand anything they're doing, but they don't care. They're just so desperate. Don't be in desperation. There's no reason to be desperate. Think of this like an educated person, like a business person. Think of this as someone Think of yourself as someone that has a lot of money, okay? You're not doing this because you need to do this. You're doing this because you want to do this, because you want to make more money, and you want to get good at it, and you desire to do this, okay? Not because you have to. You could stay at whatever job you're at, even if you hate it for the rest of your life. I could have continued doing mortgages forever. I just would have made less money, and I would have hated it, and it would have been fighting with the underwriter every single loan that I did. I can't even imagine what it's like now probably horrible now despite the fact that the mortgage industry is busy it's pro still probably like you know getting a pint of blood from somebody to get a loan done the way banks are it's crazy I do not miss that life but you know you have to take steps forward if you want to improve your situation anyways I think it's important to have an edge have an edge be different Okay, this is me. Oh, Kathy, you're doing a refi? I bet they have a million things they want from you before you go to closing, though. Write this letter, do this thing, doop a doop a do. <coughs> You'll have to let me know on that one. And I, my guess is it will take a long time, too. Refis are taking forever. You should be able to get a refinance loan done in three to four weeks. Now I hear they're taking two to three months. Anyways, when you're trading, you need to have an edge. For me, it's that I'm figuring everything out in the morning, in the pre-market. I'm looking at the gap, okay? I'm also trading on the one-minute chart. 
which moves very fast, but that gives me an edge too. I'm getting in trades early, okay? I know which way I wanna do it, weigh it well ahead of time, all right? This was another one we did, this was a short. Oh, Bruce asked about, here, we did this. That's why I didn't do the Dyson. I didn't see this because I was doing AA. That was, this is the 19th. I did this one. This closed here, gap down, fell, boom. Close to the night before around 40-ish. Open in the morning here around, looks like around 38, fell. So this was the 19th, that's what I did. I didn't, and I didn't do anything else. So the entry was 36.30, stop was 36.50. I did a lot of size in this, stop was a baby stop. Eggs at 35.55, it was a nice move. Again, tried to get a dollar, got a, got a good amount of it. This actually fell more, but I had a lot of size in it, a beautiful trade. Again, this is pretty reasonably priced. Like if you took a thousand shares of this, it would have been 36.3 in buying power, you know? But this is an advanced risk of 2,600, profit 9,750. But even if you had a thousand, a thousand shares of it, you know, <coughs> you have got a nice 75 cent move. You would have made 750 bucks. So this is what we did the 19th. So I'm looking every day, like I said, for the bullseye, opportunity. It sets up daily and golden gaps. And that counts if you're trying to make money every day in the market. Now, while some people come in the room only two, three days a week because they're busy with other stuff, you know, if you can be there Monday through Friday, I say do it. Be there as many days as you can. Now, I drew this pie chart because I, I was describing this earlier. One of the things, again, I think, which I do that is the opposite of what most people do that trade is I spend more time getting ready to trade than in the actual trade. So think about this, look at the, like if you're trading right now, look at the time you spend before, you know, you get ready to trade versus actually in the trade. Like which part of the piece of the pie are you? Like this is me getting ready to do the trade. And this is the time that I take in it, you see? So I spend more time trying to decide what to do, rating it, analyzing it, figuring everything out in the pre-market than I actually do in the trade. This is where you wanna be for success. Okay, the planning, the thought process, the analyzing is all the blue before the market even opens. If I do this really well and focus all on this, then the time I'm in and out with the accuracy is small and pinpointed, okay? Whereas most people do the opposite. They spend very little time thinking about what they're gonna do and a hell of a lot of time in the trade and they don't have good results. So it's the planning. It's like, uh, my sister just got back from Disney World. They went to Disney World. <coughs> now they had this trip planned last year. They, you know, they moved it because of COVID. They had all their dinner reservations. The second they can make the reservations, I forget if it was like 60 days before, they had every single dinner reservation booked to have an organized trip. So they could just go on the trip and everything was relaxed and they had everything pre-planned for all their dining. So she did all the work ahead of time. Everything they were gonna do was planned before their Disney trip. And then it was very relaxing. They just go and they enjoy it. Worse versus scrambling and you're busy and there's people there and it's, and all the protocols that they had going on. So the, the amount of time that you spend should be more getting ready, making the decision, the prep work, than you're actually in the trade. This should be effortless. And even if it loses, there's nothing you could do. If I take a trade and it stops, it stops. So the time you're in a trade, if it works, it goes, it's beautiful. And if it stops, it stops. The time you're in a trade should be effortless. This is the work, okay? Now I wanted to show you some options here. If you're interested in the options newsletter, I have an options subscription. <coughs> this was Netflix. I called the 500 puts on 5.4 in Netflix. This was back here, take it up. So I call this here, got the drop, fell, rallied up, got the drop. So I, call, I usually call them out one week or two weeks. Anyways, this was the 500s, it fell all the way down, actually broke 480, this was a nice move. So it was the 500 puts, here's the letter. If you sign up for the newsletter, you get the trade in live time emailed to you. It was around 10.52 in the morning. I give the ticker symbol, strike, expiration date, and type. 
which this was a put. Cost was $8. For Netflix, that's kind of roundabout. You know, they're not cheap. We did a couple of strikes in this, though. 10 contracts, risk was 8,000, sold at 20, profit $12,000, return on investment 150%. Now, one contract, a beginner risk would have been what? $800. You still would have made money. In fact, I think I have that in here. So one contract, $800, selling in at 20, profit 1,200, return on investment 150%. This is more than I would even expect. But I have been liking this and I did like this. And I had been watching this actually for several weeks, okay? Now, if you don't have time to watch the trade, you can put it on in the morning and then you put a day order to sell it. And you could have put a sell order at 12 because you, you don't know if it's gonna hit even 100% and you don't wanna worry about it and you don't wanna watch it or you don't wanna look for the targets in the chart, just sell it at 50% or just put in the order. And if it hits, it hits. If it doesn't, it'll cancel out of the day. But this had plenty of time to go and work. So this is a newsletter. If you want to sign up for the newsletter, this is separate. I'm figuring out the gaps. I'm doing the ratings on these mornings, okay? If you're in the live trading room, those are equity trades. Any questions on that? <coughs> Anyways, in this environment right now where everyone is doing different things, like I said, some are changing careers, some are changing jobs, some are working from home, while, while it's great to have all these things going on in your life, the bottom line is having extra money is great. It's the earning power, the ability that you have if you, if you actually learn, you get good, you get the skills, you get the ability to do things, you're going to feel a lot more empowered about your life even if things go upside down for circumstances that are out of your control. So it's kind of like at the end of the day where everyone was like, oh, you know, everyone wishes they were billionaires or millionaires or whatever. If you know how to make money, if you have something called earning power and knowledge, you are far better off than if somebody just gave you money and stuck it in the bank to trade because you could lose it all without knowing what to do. So while everyone wants a big account to trade and everyone wishes they had that, you would lose all the money that you have if you don't know what to do. You're better off knowing what to do, having the knowledge and the earning power because you have the knowledge, starting out with a small account and growing it, than having no knowledge or wrong knowledge or incorrect knowledge and blowing then the money that you have. So don't feel ashamed if you have a small account. There's nothing wrong with that. And you can trade options with a $2,000 account. You can't risk 8,000 in a trade if you have two grand, obviously. You have to take one contract. You have to take smaller amounts, okay? But you build it up over time. Anyways, if you want to consistently make a lot of money in the market, the only way that will happen is if you have, number one, a high winning strategy, which I do, but you can come and learn it from me. Two, good money management. You should risk the same amount in all your trades. Now, I do risk different amounts for options versus my day trades. I feel like I want to risk more with options because some are more expensive, like Tesla and Amazon, and I have a fixed amount because you can't lose more than the amount in the option and I'm trying to get bigger moves overnight. But if you want to risk the same in options and day trades, you can. But a day trade, day trade, day trade has to be the same or close to it. <coughs> options, same way. If you're going to risk 1,001, then it's 1,001, 1,001, 1,001. And this is an exact science. It depends on the cost of the contract. One, you might risk 950. One, you might risk 1,200. That's close enough. But you can't risk 950 and then buy an Amazon that costs 5,000. Do you know what I'm saying? You can't do that. Anyways, it's also important to have a good mentor to follow, which is me, and I try to help people. I take phone calls from people. I do Skype sessions with people. People email me. You know, I've had the business for a while now, so I've had people with me for a long time. Anyways, the time of the day is also key. It's morning for me. That's the big part of the focus. So if you want to trade for a living, you can do it and you can do it from home, which is very convenient for people. I think it's always been convenient because I like working from home, but really now it definitely is. So the Golden Gap course teaches a 26 point rating system to find the best stock to trade each day. The course also teaches you how to enter and exit the stock on the day, which is important, even though I'm calling them live in the room. The course teaches price analysis and technical analysis on an advanced level and of course in gaps, all right? 
You would learn if you come to me the one strategy that I do on gaps. All right, we're, le we're learning how to play the gap. That's what I'm teaching, all right? And you will really get conviction once you start doing this. Again, because again, you're looking at 26 things, that's a lot. And then once you start to make money, you'll understand that you can do it and you can do it consistently. Again, this doesn't mean that every trade that I take works. I take trades that sometimes lose, but I have a stop in and a fixed risk. And so I could take a stop and then I could take another trade and still make money on the day. Again, I'm not trading for six and a half hours a day. It's less, less is more. Think of that concept, okay? Less is more. You have to hone it down. Think of the bullseye, like I was talking about earlier. Anyways, trading is about chunking it out. This is not long-term investing, even the options. Even like the Netflix, that's, this isn't long-term investing. And sometimes I'll call something, you don't even have to get it through the strike. Sometimes I'll call a strike far away. That's the target. Or if it gets anywhere near there, it could still be profitable, depending on the time, you know, when I call it and how quick it moves, okay? This is not long-term investing. You are chunking, chunking, chunking it out. You're getting the move and you're getting out. You're playing the momentum and you're getting in and getting out. You're trying to book money every single trade and every single day. And I'm calling, you know, on the options newsletter, I mean, I could call five to 10 trades a week. So you don't have to hold something forever. You get the move, you get out, okay? And again, it's called momentum, the momentum in it. But once you learn something that works, you really start to grow and your confidence and conviction. And again, while having big trades is nice, I think it's more about the consistency for people, especially if they haven't done well over the years. Any questions? I will bring up the market here in a little bit. Anyways, empower yourself to train. If you want to learn from me, the class is called the Golden Gap Course. It's a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. The class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. So I'm doing a Memorial Day special through Monday Memorial Day. So you have from now until then to decide if you would like to sign up for the class that is in a few weeks. It's the June class. It's June 12th and 13th, Saturday and Sunday from 9 to 5. Now, what I, I'm offering is a normal tuition of the class is $69.99. That's always. Everyone pays the same. But I'm offering the trading room free through the end of next year, which is a huge deal. I've never done this before. It's a lot of time in the room. This is a great support for people that want to come and trade. And again, that are all in that they really want to do it. They want to learn the system. They open up their own account. And then they're in the room for the rest of 2021, which is still seven months to go, and then all of 2022. But the deadline for this is Monday, and you must email me for the forms to sign up. The room normally is $500 a month after the class, and you have to take the class to join the room. So you can't just you know, pay $500 a month to be in the room. Everyone in the room knows the system, okay? And again, I do teaching in the room as well. Now, if you just want to do the newsletter, the newsletter is normally $69.99 a year for all the newsletters, which you get emailed to you in live time. This is no classes. Normally, this is one year subscription. I do not have a monthly subscription for this or quarterly. It is 12 months, one year for $69.99. I'm offering Memorial Day special. You get all the rest of 2021 and all of 2022. So again, this is 19 months of the letter for the annual price. Okay, this is the newsletters like I just showed you in Netflix. If you want to sign up for this, email me too. For Keish, you're typing a question, but it's stuck. If you don't press enter, I won't be able to read it. If you need help, ask Kathy. Looks like you're typing something. Rakesh, you've been following me forever. I don't know when you're going to sign up. Anyway, success is within your grasp. Let's talk about the market. Get over here and see where we are tonight. Oh, here's the JWN. Here. Well, we had a great exit in this. We got out of this snug as a bug. So it was right before 10 o'clock. And look what this did. Where some market rallied late in the day. Look at that. We had a good exit on that. I was looking at that before I was talking. Uh, actually, let's look at NVIDIA. So this had earnings tonight. Let's see what it's doing. Okay, so this is a live gap. We may, we may as well look at it. 
So this is 628. It closed at 628 today at 4 o'clock. And now it's wiggling and jiggling. Kind of late here. It's almost 530. And this is trying to situate itself. This is down, but not much. Wow, look at this. So this, this is 415. It was all the way down at 611 at one point and all the way up at 635. So I have no idea where this opens. This is trying to figure itself out right now. So right now it's down, but it looks like it was up at one point. 635. 635, so it was up here, right at 415. And at one point it was all the way down here at 611. So I don't know where this is tomorrow. Look, it's moving right now. So I won't do anything with this tonight. And like I told you, I prefer to wait for the morning. You know, but this is gapping right now, the set earnings. Look at it, it's moving. Let's squish this open. There's the one minute. Well, this is a live gap, we're looking at it. So I'm not gonna do anything with this till tomorrow. I don't know if I'm gonna do it because it's not done moving. Okay. Let's look at the market. So we're flat. Flat tonight. Let me get this off. So kind of a funky two days. Why? That, well, actually, let's go back to Monday. Monday we gapped up. We rallied. Tuesday we gapped up and fell, but not much. Like we could have fallen all the way down here. We didn't. We fell a little bit. That was it. Then we gapped up today and we didn't fall at all. Look, we tried, we failed. Then we almost got bought. We actually closed green on the day with a gain. Look at that. Let's look at the cues. Yeah. So we're, we're basically flat here tonight too. But again, closed green. So I think we have extended the range, which is widening, going back for the last... Well, let's just say May. So here's the range of May. And again, May ends Monday. So we got two more trading days left in this month and that's it. June 1st starts next week. So I think we're gonna break out of the range in June. I'm not so sure we're gonna break out of this range in the next two days. Remember, low volume, probably going to the Halloween week, people leaving, going to the Hamptons, going on vacation, doing what else the next two days. We'll get some movers Thursday, Friday, but the market, I think it's gonna be in this range for the next two days. And then we'll see where we go into June. We uh, have economic data out some Thursday, some Friday. The SPY is a lot closer to the high. I just, you know, it's, it's hard to believe that we're this strong. 422.81, I mean, we are so close to making new highs again. So you can't short this market here right now but I think it's a crappy place to take a new long entry. If you're long, you're riding it out, and clearly a lot of people are because you don't see any profit taking here. We just refuse to fall. So I think the range has widened, and low odds we're gonna make a new high by Friday, but we do have some data out. SPY is close to doing it. The Qs aren't gonna make it by then. So that's my take for the next couple of days here in the market. I think we're gonna see more movement in the overall market in June. I don't think we're going to be in this range for another 30 days in June. That we were in a very tight range pretty much the whole entire month of May. Any questions from anyone about anything? Rakesh, I still can't see your question. You can email me if you have a question. Does anybody else have any questions? Tiago, I see you here. You called me. Do you have any questions? You made it in. Tiago, do you want a trial to the rim tomorrow? You got Hotcom downloaded. Anybody wants a trial to the rim tomorrow? Email me tonight, Melissa at the stock swoosh.com. Email me and I'll send it to you with the password. I'm sure we'll get some things tonight, and I um, mean, I'm sure we'll get some things tomorrow. NVIDIA, I'm not going to do anything with right now because I want to wait and see how this acts in the morning. Because right now, I mean, this is kind of crazy here. Rakesh, I can't see what you're writing, but you can you can feel free to email me too. Listen, have a safe holiday weekend and most importantly enjoy yourself i'm going to enjoy myself too we're supposed to get rain this weekend unfortunately in new york but tomorrow's going to be a nice day 
So I'm going to go meet some friends tomorrow night, sit outside, have a nice dinner before the rain, and maybe rent some movies over the weekend. We've had some nice days here in New York, though. And then we'll come back at it next week. So if you're interested in the, either one of the Memorial Day specials for the options or the class, I'm not going away. I will be in New York, so I'm here. You can call me if you have questions. You can email me. And if you want to sign up, email me. I will send you the forms. It's a lot of time in the room and, and a lot of time in the newsletter for the price. It's well, well worth it. The next earning season doesn't start till, let me look it up. I wanna say July something. Here, I'll look it up. Well, actually, you know what? Let me just look and see where an apple is, even though that's not at the beginning. Third week of July. Third week of July. But the, the, the market just cannot stay in this range for the whole other month of June. I just don't think that's going to happen. But earnings season, which really tends to move the market, is not till July. But, I mean, we are just so close to the highs. I don't know. I mean, I, I wouldn't put anything past this market. i got to be honest with you. I'm not, I'm not long this fine right now. I'm not. Because I think this is a crappy place to go long. But I, and I don't think we'll make a new high on a Friday before Memorial Day weekend. But you know what? Who the heck knows? I mean, I know people that are short here are getting pummeled. Because we, I mean, we gapped up today. We gapped up today. We fell yesterday, what I consider a small amount. And people thought we were going to collapse all the way down into support. Whether it was here at 415 or down here to 410. We didn't do it. We didn't do it. And then you get up today and we gapped up again. I mean, again, going back to institutional money... That big money is not selling. They're not dumping their positions. So how, this market isn't going to go down until that happens. You know what I'm saying? A couple of retail traders trading uh, something for a gap fill is not going to push this market down. Just no way, no how. So think and work on selective picks. That's what I've been doing. Like, like the JWN today. Tomorrow I'll look at NVIDIA. I don't know if I'm trading it. I will make that determination then in the morning. Selective picks. And again, if you want a trial, email me. Why would I think ahead of time that it's not going to sell off today? Because the market's too strong. And we we refused. Here, look at all you have to do is look at this here. I'm going to look at the I'm going to blow this up. All you have to I'm very good at reading price, Rakesh. Look at this. I'm going to squish this. I'm going to make it look how squished that is. This is today. I mean, again, I squished it, but look at that. Like, we didn't go anywhere. This is like so squished. Look at the size of the bar. It's a baby bar for the market. Like, this is strength. That's how I'm reading this. I'm good at reading price. That's a reason to come and trade with me, by the way. The, this is strength. This is like, we are not going down. <laughs> it's just like, it's not moving. Like if you were, if you were trying to short today, you were frustrated and lost. How do I know ahead of time? Because I'm reading the gap. That's what I talked about all the last hour. And you've been to my other webinars for Keish. You know I do gaps. You know that I do gaps. I read the gap. I read it in the pre-market. So a lot of people train for gap fills. That is not what I do. People thought that retail traders thought the market would fill the gap today and yesterday and the day before and the day before that. And it's not happening. That is, you cannot trade that way. It doesn't work consistently, even though sometimes it does. It does not work as a way to make money five days a week, you know, 200 plus trading days a year. You must read the price action, and I'm able to read that because I'm able to read gaps. I would not have shorted the gap today, nor did I. I would not have shorted the gap yesterday, nor did I. I just got done saying this market is a beast. 
you know? You thought what was going to go off the roof? You mean rally? What are you talking about? Off the roof? I don't know what you mean off the roof. We're showing strength. I, this isn't, this isn't, I, you know, I, if we could rally over the high in the next two days, like I said, but I don't see anything here indicating off the roof, no. This is just a steady rally. There's no off the roof anything. Gap down rally, gap up rally, gap up fall, gap up rally, gap down, uh, gap up fall, neutral day. Like there's no, there's no off the roof. And don't, don't forget what I just said. We're following institutional money. We're following big professional traders. They're, they're on vacation. They're on vacation. You, what do you, what do you think people that are billionaires are doing? They're, they're already at their beach houses, people. They're not leaving at four o'clock on a Friday and going to be in traffic for five hours. They are gone. I, I have friends in New York. They left last Friday. People are not here, <laughs> you know. I need to get a beach house, but not yet. I'm looking for a new house here in New York. Listen, have a great night. Have a fabulous day, and I will see some of you. If you're interested in the trial, email me. Very good. Thanks, Kathy.